Okay, we are underway. I am uh, super excited about my interview today. I was just telling my next guest that I feel like I know her, which I've never met her personally, but been following Lori Ballin for many years. And uh, Lori, thank you so much for taking the time out of your, your schedule to talk to me today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, you bet. So um, I understand, you're, Did you were you interviewed by Gary Keller or are you going to be, you, it was done? Uh-huh. Oh, man. Yeah, so I did a... Um, he interviewed me at Mega Camp actually on on online marketing, and so we did a phone interview first, and then I was on a panel with him at Mega Camp, and they had just posted it on the on the website, so that's why I was all excited that's about awesome. it. Excited it went live, yeah. That's great. Well, I, I I'm sure my interviewing skills are nowhere near Gary Keller's, but I'm going to try to live up to. Uh, so those are some high. That's a high bar right there. So anyway, um. I've been doing these things for the last couple of weeks, and I've interviewed some really interesting people. I'm really glad. I really wanted to talk with you because um, you're just a really great success story. And I was wondering if you could just take some time and just tell us how you got to where you are today, how you got into real estate, what you did before that. Talk a little bit about your real estate business because I know you've had tremendous success, and then we'll get into what you're doing now. So the floor is yours. Sure. Well, I started out actually as an interpreter for the deaf. I was doing sign language and working as an independent contractor when I met my husband, Richard. I was 21 and he was 31. Well, he had a catering and entertainment company and so quickly he recruited me over there to, to do all the marketing and we ended up running that for quite a while. We sold it in 2004 and were worth a few million dollars at the time so we had all the you know nice house and fancy cars and kids off into college and all that good stuff and a new little baby at home actually and then uh, we found ourselves completely broke market crashed we were gambling in the casinos we live in Vegas we got bored what do you do so it took us about two years and we lost all three million that we had um, in liquid and stocks and all that and so my husband comes home one day and says, guess what? We got to go, got to go to work. And I'm like, go to work doing what? What do we possibly, what are our skills? Like, what do we do? You know, cause we'd always just worked for ourselves. And he says, well, I think we should go into real estate. And I said, Oh no, 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 no. Because people don't like real estate agents. It was my impression at the time. Right. And I like to be liked. So I didn't want to be a real estate agent. <laughs> and basically, he, I, I went and worked with my brother for his, at his computer company for a little while and then my husband just kept showing up and saying, you got to come join me, you got to come join me and he was over at a, a brokerage for about seven months and was kind of the for sale by owner guy and he said, Lori, if you would do the marketing that you did for our catering company and do the exact same thing over here, we would be unstoppable. So, you know, we, all we ever knew was working together so I caved and kicked Kicking and dragging and screaming, he dragged me over into real estate. And uh, but then I got really passionate about the marketing behind it. You know, well, let me see what I can do with this. It's it's houses instead of hamburgers, but I bet you I could I could do the same thing with this. And sure enough, we were there only one week, and we got our first referral from Twitter from a tweet I had posted that we had joined Keller Williams, and um, we just were we've just done a lot of really cool stuff since we've been there working together. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about your your success in real estate, the, the numbers, because I, I think you've made some, you've transitioned into kind of a different way of doing business in the real estate business. Where, where, what was your what was your best year, transaction wise or, or dollar wise, whatever you're comfortable sharing? Um, we we did about a hundred transactions several years in a row, completely from the internet and through Facebook, um, real estate agent to real estate agent referrals. So they were still all off the web, but those were that was a combination. So Google organic search engine traffic and um, and then networking with agents through Facebook to get referrals. So and that was our norm. That was our average. Um, I hit a ceiling of achievement, honestly, because I wasn't great at I was good at team building. I wasn't great at um, I didn't want to go to work every day and, do, and 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 raise people. I don't know how else to say it. Right, that just right. wasn't my strength. And so I, you know, I would have done a lot more. I had enough leads to do a lot more, but I didn't really have the the des the desire to be there every day, growing people and and recruiting and hiring. And you know, Seth Campbell's strength is is that leadership stuff. My strength sit behind a computer generating leads, you know. And so that's where I want to be. So recently, I changed my model, 
and allowed myself to come home and work from home and do nothing but generate leads all day. And I work with partners here in Vegas and across Nevada and now into Washington and Southern California. And I'm working on national, um, national, I work referral to referral now. So I no longer get all the credit. So, it, it, you know, that, that was a tough one. Cause I'm like, Oh, there goes my Gary Keller interviews. <laughs> but if I meet my goal of a million in GCI and one year off referrals, he'll have me back. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, that's a phenomenal. That's a fun. So tell us a little bit about more of the, of the model that you're doing now, and then let's get into the, the organic search and things like that. So, what what are you, what exactly are you doing today? What's, you know, what's you're different? the first one to have me on camera talking about what I'm doing now. I know. I've noticed. I saw. I, I saw that you. This is sort of new, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. So tell tell us what you're doing now. All right. So. What I did is I, I decided to no longer have physical exclusive team members. So I still have a team of agents in Nevada, but they don't exclusively work for me. So they also have their own business. So it's a completely different model. All I ask of them is that when we cultivate a lead and we hand them a ready or willing buyer or seller, that they, they run it down for a touchdown you know, and take it home. Right. So I have an inside sales agent that works for me full time. I generate the leads. He cultivates the leads. Once the leads are ready and willing, then we have referral partners we work with. And instead of a 50-50 split like a team, it's a 33% to my side. And then they get the rest because we've also cultivated the referral. So they do the transaction. They handle the paperwork, it closes out in their name, and they send me a referral. Um, and it, it financially, it's not all that different than having a team, let me tell you, because I don't have the same costs that I had at one time. So right. profitability-wise, I'm making more money now than I did when I had a physical team. So we may someday go back to physical. If I ever found just a rock star leader that wanted to go build expansion and and it just made sense and it fit and they wanted to go grow people and I could still stay right here doing this, it could happen, it could happen. But for right now, I knew that I had to get myself out of that environment and do what I, because I wasn't making great money, you know? A lot of people sit up there on the stage closing all these deals, they don't necessarily have money that they're taking home at the end of the day. I've always been very honest about that. And so I wanted to get to the point where I could keep some of that money <laughs> and um, grow it without having some of the restraints that I had dealing with the physical team here in Vegas. That's really interesting. Um, are there others who are doing this that, that you've heard of? or is, is I don't know. I know there's forms of it. I know there's a lot of big agents that generate web leads, a lot that do pay, more pay-per-click right. that are referring out across the nation, but they also have physical teams. So I don't know. Does anybody not have physical teams that is doing what I'm doing? I really, I, 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 I have, been, I've looked because I wanted a model and I have not found one yet. So I could be the one blazing the trail. That's no. awesome. That, that's awesome. Hey, so I wanted to, so I am the productivity coach here in La Quinta. So I work with a lot of new agents, yeah. agents that have just come into the business. And the question is always, you know, how, how do I drive leads? What do I do to find people? So if I come to you and I say, Lori, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a brand new agent and I want to, I want to concentrate on bringing in leads from the web and, and uh, organic search and, and things like that. What what advice do you have for somebody? Um, and, and the next question in that is, do you have do you have to buy? Do you have to do pay per click, or or can you really do it organically? First of all, you can do it organically. That's the way I've always done it. We just started adding pay per click in a very small level, um, more because I own a marketing company as well, and we're providing those services for clients. And so we want to have our own proof alongside of them, not because we necessarily need to do any pay-per-click. Um, I'm not opposed to pay-per-click. I think there's a blend. But back to your first question, um, I think if, if somebody's new getting started, the thing that they have to understand is this is work and it is lead generation just like picking up a phone would be. You still got to spend two to three hours every single day. It's still going to take a long time to get through the cultivation process. It's just like prospecting. If you're calling and you're calling and you're calling and you know I've got to get through 100 dials to get to one person probably and then you've got to cultivate that contact and get them in your database. None of it's generally instant. There's still a process. And good old fashioned search engine optimization could take a year. It could take longer. It depends on 
how much how disciplined they are how focused they are how much they follow a strategy it can be done by anybody anywhere that has the focus and is willing to put the discipline and the time in to do the activities and measure for results those are key right, right. How, how much does social media play into uh, the organic searches and, and organic what's, what's the word uh, organically finding clients. How, how much does that play into it in this day and age? It's moving so quickly, right? I'm a huge fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, and yeah. I'm sure you're familiar. I mean, it's just amazing how quickly things move. And yesterday it was Instagram. Today it's Snapchat. Tomorrow it'll be what? How, how do how do I where, where do I go? How do I how do I keep up? Where should I put my time and energy? Great question. Now I will I'll tell you. I think social media is huge. And I'm so grateful for it because as far as my marketing company goes, 90%, 93% of our business comes from social media wow. versus, um, and now it's really climbing on the organic as well. But being so new, I use my social networking following to build clientele because the search engine rankings aren't there yet for a brand new company. Um, so it's, it's, it's huge. And, it, and a lot of people are just playing social. That's all they do. And, and you can generate a lot of clients. Still the same same ideas of demographically targeting, creating the right product and message, providing value, rising above the noise. The concepts aren't that different. As far as how to keep up, here's my two cents on it. Now, Gary is one of those that'll say, you got to be on Snapchat or you're missing the opportunity. You got to be on this one. You got to be on this one. I take a different stance. And mine is you need to be where your customers are, period, end of story. Millennials aren't my clients. I know my clients and the average age group is, is well, 34 to 52, but right about the 40s is right. the primary range, which makes perfect sense because that's my age range. And that's who's buying or selling real estate out here. Millennials are up and coming. So I'm on Facebook because that's where my demographic is. That's I speak the language. I understand it. How are you possibly going to understand the language of all these different social networks and the etiquette? And the, it would just be impossible unless you had this huge, ma massive you know, stack. Right. And so I, there's a few I dabble on. My 24 year old daughter laughed at me the other day and she said, she messaged me and goes, did you just get on Snapchat? <laughs> like, I think I logged in. I don't know why she goes, you don't need to be on Snapchat. I'm like, my oh, daughter's, my daughter's 20. She says the same thing. Dad, Snapchat's not for you. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> well, my 13 year old agrees. So I said, all right, between the two of them, they'd rather me not be on Snapchat. I'll just leave that one alone. Cause if it's, I don't play on social, it's, right. it's all work for me. So if I can't work on Snapchat, <laughs> forget it. Right. And right. that's not my audience. So, so, um, I want to talk a little bit about the psychology be behind who you are, because I know you've been uh, tremendously successful. You're obviously very hardworking. So, wh what what is it? Uh, why why do you do what you do? What's what's your big why? What's what's your purpose? I mean, what what drives you every day to get out of bed or and and work so hard? It's interesting. I can tell you first of all that I'm one of those very fortunate people that was born with a chip on my shoulder and a fire in the belly. I just wake up every single day with a passion to conquer and take over the world. I've been that way since I was born. You know, some of us just kind of have that natural oomph, like we just have to go prove something or do something. Right. Um, that being said, I think just recently I went through a, a big. Um, a big battle with prescription uh, drug addiction for over 10 years and it was one of those it, it, with any drug addiction it really um, knocks out your human qualities you forget how to love and how to care and you know I was just angry all the time and just just a workhorse but kind of just angry all the time and um, and then I my younger brother started having babies he was later than the rest of us and he started having babies and um, something just snapped, something changed with my entire life and I went and got help and, and got off this prescription medication and I came out like a newborn baby, like everything just, the senses and everything tasted good and everything felt good and life was just amazing. What a beautiful thing to have happen to us, like coming out of a coma. Yeah. And, um, and then my little brother just kept having these babies and he had three within three years. And my little brother was like a son to me. My mom was gone all the time, so I kind of raised him. And so these were like little, almost like little grandbabies. And I just just got obsessed with, I want to get all the family together. I want to get everybody in Vegas. I want to make us all safe. I want to give us all places to work. And um, I actually recruited my younger brother away from his own company. And he's now running my company with me. And he said he did it because he wanted his babies to have a better quality of life. And I was able to put the kids in private school. And... 
um, help him do all these things. And so now my sister works for me and my brother works for me and my 24 year old, I recruited her away from Apple and she now works with me on my team. So I'm able to provide the people I love and others that are great talent too opportunity that they wouldn't have anywhere else, you know? And so, you know, you mentioned prescription drugs. I, I've, I had a double fusion, uh, I guess it's been about eight years ago. And, uh, I don't know that I was necessarily addicted, but I was definitely, I was heading down that direction. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And it's funny what you, what you said. So I decided one day, I was actually, you know, under doctor's care and, and, and I, I just decided one day I'm going to stop. And so I very slowly, over 30 days, weaned myself off of that. And when I came out of that, exactly what you just said, it was like I had come out of a fog and out of out of the clouds and you know everything was so much clearer so I applaud you for for doing that I I know personally how difficult that is uh, it's not an easy thing to stop doing so I, I appreciate you very much sharing that um, that's I'm glad I'm glad you're doing well so that that's great um, so you, you tell us what you're doing now because I think you've you, you started this new company is, is that the correct uh, vernacular I guess new uh, but tell us what you're doing now yeah, um, my passion since I was a child, one of my passions was to own a marketing company. I've just always been drawn towards marketing. And when, when Richard dragged me into real estate, I was really wanting to go open a marketing company then. We just didn't really have the capital or the money to do it. So once I got my brother Jeff on board, it part of our, our conversation when he came on a couple of years ago now was, we're going to launch this marketing company now that I've got you with me. And he's he's a geek too, like me, like we're not traditional nerdy geeks, but we both speak geek and are really techn technologically savvy. And um, I said, with you here, we can definitely do this. So, um, so we do. We we build real estate websites. So, Ballon real estate websites are really are have become the staple um, of the business already. We do pay per click marketing for for all real estate agents. Our focus is real estate agents. We have a lot of people calling that are not real estate agents, but we're still primarily focused on real estate agents. Um, we help market their listings, we do their recurring blogging, write them all custom content. I have a team of expert writers, we build all their community pages, um, whatever they need. We're, we're their go-to tech team when it comes to real estate marketing online. I, I talked to Jeff via email because, you know, KW is rolling out these Playster sites. Mm -hmm. So can you help agents with those? Can you guys uh -huh. get involved in those and, and SEO and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, basically any website that is visible to the search engines, mm -hmm. we can definitely work on. We call it SEO-driven content. So our focus is on how do we create content that is going to attract the search engines and that is going to be incredibly val valuable for the user. It really doesn't matter what website they're on. We encourage people to own their own websites and build on the, you know, so that they at least own the domain and whatnot. But, Whatever they have, we can definitely work with. And that's the key, right? I mean, it's all it's all about the content, right? And rich content. I mean, yes. I know very little, but that, that, that's really the key. Um, okay, so I, a couple couple questions, and then and then we'll close it. I try to keep these short. And I, again, I appreciate your time so much. So, if I were going to uh, ask you to have a conversation with your 20 year old self, so you get to place a call to your 20 year old self and give your 20 year old self any advice based on what you know today, what, what would you tell your 20-year-old self? Wow. Um, my, my heart started beating all fast. That's a, that's a very thought-provoking question. You know, I wouldn't advise myself to do anything that would change the future because I've just, I'm just so passionate. I believe that everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. But probably just to avoid some of the some of the paths, I would tell myself to be very in tune to my mind and body and listen to what I'm telling myself. Because I think if we if we're really if we really listen to our minds, bodies, spirits, energies, the direction is always there. Whether it's whether you believe it's God driven or energy driven, it's there. And and I think sometimes we just shut it out and don't listen. And I think if I had listened more at that age, I would have followed my passions a little bit more instead of following men or whatever else, you know, <laughs> at that time. Right, right. That, that's, that's great. And one other question. So if you had to give us one word to describe the reason for your success, just one word, what word would that be? And I would say you can, give, you can make it two if you want, but, but one, one word.
Perseverance. And explain explain that a little bit for us. I think in in our industry and in any other industry, when you're building a business, you hit wall after wall after wall, and there's 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 crying and 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 re whatever else happens, and and there's you run out of money or somebody quits on the spot or I don't care who you are, this has happened if you're building a business. Of course. And it's so easy to quit. It's so easy to quit and just walk away when things get tough, you know, and and um, I think that perseverance that I can do this, perseverance to get through the drugs, perseverance to get through, you know, just I think that, that stick with itness and, and I can do this no matter what's happening in my life right now. I think that perseverance just keeps pushing me through to the next level. That's a that's a great answer and it's it's clearly served you very well. I mean you've 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 as you mentioned, you know, you've been successful, you lost it all and then you've come back and now you're gonna be even more successful than you were. So congratulations. So if people want to get a hold of you or they're interested in possibly having you build a website, where do they go? Who do they call or who should they contact? Well our website is ballonbrands.com and um, Jeff is our go-to for everything over at Ballon Brands and they can just go to Ballon Brands and click the chat button um, or contact us right from there and, and uh, Sabrina, my beautiful 24 year old daughter is always on the chat monitoring everything so any questions anybody had about anything, search and social strategies, website building, getting started with technology, we're definitely there to help them. Perfect. And I do have a training system on what yeah. I do, the Ballon Method yeah. and that's theballonmethod.com and I every day pour into that system. If I learn something new, it goes in there. And whether they're beginning agents or um, expert agents, this is a fantastic learning platform for anybody wanting to learn internet marketing and getting more leads online. Excellent. Okay. Well, listen. Thank you so much. I, I know you're busy, and I really appreciate you take, taking some time to talk to us. And uh, take care. Continued success. And uh, hopefully, we'll talk again soon. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.